use a dibbler to poke a little hole and then we're just gonna stick these onions back in the ground. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Sunday, October 8th here in South Georgia. And several videos ago, I told you I was headed down this perennial onion rabbit hole. On today's video, we're gonna dive right in. We need to divide and replant our Louisiana evergreen shallots over here in the raised bed garden. And then I've got about nine more varieties, new to me varieties of perennial onions that we're gonna be planting in another raised bed. So even though this bed of Louisiana evergreen shallots looks pretty full, it's about to get even fuller, if that's a word. So we planted individual bulbs here about a month, month and a half ago. As you can see, they're growing like crazy. I've already multiplied into seven, eight, sometimes nine stalks there. So what we need to do today is pull these up, trim them up a little bit, separate them out, and replant them in this bed even thicker than they are now. So a lot of you purchased these Louisiana Evergreen Shallot bulbs from our website earlier this year when we had them in stock. And a lot of people have been asking when they can cut green onion tops, when they should divide out these onions like we're gonna do today. You can basically cut the green onion tops anytime you need some green onion tops. These plants are really tough, you're not gonna really hurt them. And as far as dividing them out, anytime you see them multiplying them, you can pull them up like we're gonna do today, split them up and replant them. So a little bit decided she wants to help when she's not eating cotton. Is that good? So what we're gonna do here is pull up these big clumps just like this. Uh-oh, I just shook dirt all over you, didn't I? Got it all in your hair. So that's what we're working with there. And we need to trim these up a little bit before we replant them. So we're gonna take our scissors and just trim the roots off here. Can you help? Pull it apart. No? Eat some dirt. So we get the roots trimmed off here. And then we're gonna trim the tops off as well. I will save some of these tops, but I don't need this many green onion tops. Probably should put these in a bucket that way you can give them to the worms or somebody. Anyway, that's what we want right there. And then we just split these apart just like that. And that's what we can replant. So I'm gonna go through here and pull up and trim and divide at least this first row here. I may let that row over there grow a little bit more. We'll get this first row done and then I'll show you how we put them back in the ground. All right, so we got that row pulled up, got the roots trimmed, got the tops trimmed, got them split apart. Some really nice looking onions there. We might take a few of those inside and enjoy them this week, but the majority of them are gonna get replanted right back in the same spot. I do think I'll pull up this line, that way I can put down a little fertilizer and probably add another drip line there because we should be able to get two rows out of all these we have here. All right, so we pulled back that drip line. Now we're gonna amend it. A little bit of coop grow fertilizer here. Just gonna sprinkle some of this all over the bed or all over this side of the bed. Perennial onions like to eat, so we gotta make sure we feed them. And we're gonna scratch that into the soil just a little bit there. And we're gonna put this drip line back down Add a few staples, keep that in place. And then I found another drip line underneath the barn that I'm guessing came out of one of these other beds that's the same length. So it's already got the fittings on it. We just need to punch a hole right here. Get that popped in there. There we go. Sometimes these drip lines, or these mainline tubing after they sit out in the sun for a while, they get a little soft and harder to punch a hole in. We got it now. We just need to put some staples on this new line. Actually, you know what? The more I look at this, the more I don't like it. So I think I'm gonna replace this piece of main line here. That way I can move this drip line over this way a little bit, get them a little more equally spaced. All right, so quick change of plans here. Take those drip lines off. Get that piece of main line tubing off there. 
get that end cap off get us a new piece of mainline tubing try to straighten it out a little bit tighten it down trim it off right here just like that put our end cap on here get that tightened down and in place two more holes pop those drip lines in there there we go now we cook them in grease got those spread out a little bit more i like that a lot better now i'm going to use this little dibbler here that one of our viewers jim sent me a while back this thing has been the ticket for propagating fig trees but i think it's going to work well for replanting these evergreen shallots as well so i'm going to use a dibbler to poke a little hole and then we're just going to stick these onions back in the ground put them about i don't know four five six inches apart here going to plant a double row here and a double row on that line of tape and there we go we got them divided and replanted we got an extra drip line to keep these thirsty rascals happy and we got some groceries here them right there are going to be mighty fine with some eggs and if you're wondering what these taste like they taste like an onion more like a white onion than a sweet onion though let me peel this one back here get a little bit of that dirt off of there and we'll give one a sample so there we go got it nice and cleaned up tastes like a really good onion got a little bit of a bite to it but nothing wrong with that at all so we can eat this part this part we can eat this whole thing so we got those evergreen shallots taken care of for the time being now here i have eight or nine more different varieties of perennial onions that we're going to plant and we're going to put all those in this bed right here where we tried to grow some fall taters but all we ended up doing is putting some taters in the ground so they could rot so we've already got some drip lines in place here that should be enough to get us started i just pulled those back so we can get this kind of even back out and amended a little bit still got a few of those corn stalks in there those have mostly rotted out at this point chunk out some of those little corn stalks all right now we're just going to take the rest of this bag of coop growth sprinkle it out here and then we're going to add some mushroom compost so yesterday morning i had to make a little run to the big city of albany get some more pro mix and i got a few more bags of this stuff i really like mushroom compost for these raised beds seems like it does a great job helping build the biology so we're gonna dump i think two bags in this bed and then we'll get it spread out all right that looks good enough to me let's put these lines back down and get them held in place with some staples so like i told you we've got eight or nine different varieties that we're going to be planting today they all kind of look the same but they are different as far as their growth habit and how they reproduce so we'll go through the list real quick like i don't know a lot about these varieties but i'll tell you what i do know about them so the first one we got is the e-toy multiplier onion this one's supposed to be really heat tolerant and the u.s cultivar of it is said to originated in arizona then we have the heritage white walking onion also known as the tree onion this one much like the egyptian walking onion is cold hardy in zones three through nine then we have the red welsh bunching onion this one is said to have originated in china or siberia it never forms a bulb like those louisiana evergreen shallots do this one is propagated by dividing or it also forms seeds so you can save those seeds and propagate it that way then we have the Cybo perennial bunching onion and supposedly Cybo is Scottish for spring onion. Now this one never forms seeds like the red Welsh bunching onion so you propagate this one simply by division. Next is the flagpole scallion and these supposedly get really really tall and they're supposedly really cold hardy down to zero degrees Fahrenheit even. Next one on the list is called the Florida Finley Onion. I have heard of this one. It originated in Polk County, Florida. And much like the Louisiana Evergreen Shallots, these kind of go dormant during the summertime, and then you get them back going in late summer, early fall. 
Then we have the Bunching Onion of Madagascar. Any guesses where that one originated? This one doesn't form seeds either. It's simply propagated by division and is said to perform well in hot and dry conditions. Next would be the White Welsh Bunching Onion. This one does form seeds, so you can propagate it via seeds or division. This one's also known as the Japanese Bunching Onion. And then last on the list, we have the Green Mountain Potato Onion, which is similar to those white potato onions that we planted earlier, but the bulbs on these have more of a tan color to them. So we're going to plant all eight or nine of these varieties in this bed using these two drip lines and we're just going to kind of space them out a little bit that way each variety is separated and we'll tag them that way we can look at all of them at one time. So here we have the white Welsh bunching onion. Just going to pull this root ball out of here and try to tease these onions apart. A pretty nice root system on them there. Do these just like we did those evergreen shallots. I'm gonna trim up those roots a little bit there. I'm gonna trim up these tops a little bit here. And then we're just gonna separate them out. There's one, there's a nerdin, there's a nerdin, and there's a nerdin. And then we're just gonna plant these on a double row right here. I don't know, four, five, six inches apart. I think I only got five plants there. That's what it looks like. Okay. And we'll put our label in the ground for this one. I might come back and put some better labels in here later. But that'll be a good placeholder for now. And we'll skip over a few inches, plant another variety. All right, so we got them all planted in little sections there. We've got our white Welsh bunching onion, Florida Finley onion, red Welsh bunching onion, heritage white walking onion. Then over here we got the Cybo perennial bunching onion, the bunching onion of Madagascar, the Etoy multiplier onion, flagpole scallion, and then I got a few of those green mountain potato onion bulbs right there. So we'll do our best to keep all these properly labeled and keep the variety separated and as these multiply we'll just move each variety out a little bit left or right along this bed and it should eventually be full of a nice little perennial onion trial. So I think this is going to be pretty cool. I hope you're excited as well. And if you've ever grown any of those varieties that we planted over there, please do tell me about them in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links and coupon codes in the description below. And also go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where you can find that Coop Grow fertilizer. And I think we may still have a few Egyptian walking onion bulbs left. And if you want to see us plant those other potato onions that we have here in the raised bed garden, check out this video right here. We'll show you how we got the bed prepped, how we got those in the ground, and how we think they're going to do down here. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy dog farm.